What's up, everybody? You are now tuning in to What's Behind the Scenes, better known as BTS. And what exactly is that? Well, from your favorite movies to your TV shows to comedy shows and more. OK, there's a lot of things that go into putting those things together, but you're only seeing what's in front of the camera. So here I am here today, your host, Shantae Wayans, and I'm interviewing people about what's behind them scenes. It should have been some type of like. <laughs> anyway, man, I am here. With, that was the, because the way I ended it, I said, what is that? What is that? The, the, the little, uh, I just want to rock. Yeah, they don't have, oh, they do be putting that on, uh, well, Pinner 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 pin, pin is the only thing that's free oh. on, uh, for the, for the music mm. beat. And a little chicka chicka. Pinner 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 Pinner. <laughs> you can't do that. I just wanna, you can't even say that. You gotta yeah. say something else. Um, my guys, I, I don't even know why I'm sitting here with these questions because I'm here with one of my favorite human beings. Uh, he's my cousin. Uh, we grew up from wee little and the same things that we're gonna get into it. But uh, for, for what I want y'all to know, he is a writer, a producer, an actor and so much more, please help me welcome uh, my cousin, Craig Waynes. Yay! <laughs> I keep doing that like, like I got an audience. You forgot, well now, this is one of the big things. I've dropped all those things, and I'm focusing mainly on directing and stand-up. Nice! Uh, writing nice. too, but um, that's now that Sage has graduated. Yeah. I, that's the baby. That's yeah. Me. So since my last kid graduated, I'm like, oh, I could just be me and not have to have a secure thing. I could just jump out both feet. That is really, I never knew that about you. Yeah. I never that's knew that. That's why I've that been you... in the garage for three years. I've been <laughs> transitioning, like, all right, how am I going to make this next step? Yeah. Now, the security blanket was there, built up a little. Security blanket, and it's like now it's time for the next step. No responsibilities. And, I could be crazy. Damn, that's directing. And 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 so let me ask you though, like when did you realize this? Uh, I've been planning this out. I was saying it, and you know they say speak things into existence. Yeah. Uh, so I was saying it. It's part of the reason why I think my last relationship ended too. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do now that the baby's out the house. I don't have to wake up at this time. I don't have to not go on these trips because he's going to be home alone. Yeah. I could. I don't have to pay tuition at a private school. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, oh, I could take more chances. That's real, cousin. Yeah. Damn. You know, it's, it's crazy because when you talk about your security blanket now, you know, uh, I mean, anybody, anytime somebody, we'll just put it out there, we're related to... Uh, the Wayans brothers, Marlon, Sean, Ken, and Damon, um, Kim. Uh, but we had such a big family. And growing up in Fulton Housing, uh, it was not only the 10 kids, uh, my mother, his mother, uh, and so much more, but him, uh, Craig, me, and my brother. And so we were stuffed in this two bedroom. Two, four bedroom. It was four bedrooms? It's, well, grandma took one bedroom. Grandpa, <laughs> grandpa had his own room. And then everybody else piled into the oh. other two rooms. So you didn't get to go into the other two rooms, but it was a four bedroom. Yo, Craig, this whole time I thought we were splitting two bedrooms. <laughs> All the against, kids. What's that? 15, 16 people? Yeah, well, we did. But, but they, they had their own rooms. <laughs> How did they have their own rooms apiece? They slept in separate bedrooms. Yo. <laughs> Yo, Craig. And they've been married. Our grandparents was married for... Since they, got they were together, 17 to they were in their 80s. They yeah, but grandma had her first child, I think, at like 13. At no, the, she had her first child at 17. That really? was Uncle Dwayne, yes. What uh, life have I learned about grandma? Cause yeah. I, and then they got, um, I believe they got married shortly after that. That's when they lived in Harlem on 127th. And then they got separate bedrooms. bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, people didn't get divorced. Right. They got, uh, they got separate bedrooms, and that made a world of difference yeah. for everybody in the house. Then you had the boys' room. In the girls' room. Yeah. I feel like Grandpa only came out to discipline. 
Oh, he was at work or Kingdom Hall all the time. Yeah. So you didn't know if he was behind the closed door. He was like the Wiz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know if he was behind the closed door. She's like, Doug, I'll tell Grandpa. Right, right. You didn't know if he was behind that door, man. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. 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 Y
the editing wasn't funny, but when a collective comes together and be like, nah, you're going to be the funniest out to that. Not funny. You yeah. should do it this way. Yeah. And you got the, the Damon, Arsenio, Paul Mooney, Robert Townsend, yeah. like even on the, even the Bill Cosby impersonation. If you watch early Robert, you see he was the guy that was doing Bill Cosby in Hollywood. He was killing it with that. And he was like, nah, this is how you do it. Damn. To the Damon, the woo, pull yeah, over. Yeah, pull. yeah. So you see little bits and it's like, they don't do that no more, pal. I know, man. It's, ah, that's what I miss about my early comedy uh, days because I feel like, I mean, all y'all used to come out. It was a squad. Yeah, it was, it was a squad. And even the people that we know now, everybody was like kind of starting off at that time and we would all go to each other's shows and just but the same thing happens with every crew that starts up like that yeah yeah <laughs> then one person wants to be famous starts taking a couple of jokes yeah then there's the, uh, <laughs> the other person that just gets shady once they yeah. start working yeah and then there's... people are like why you ain't tell me about the audition yeah. one of us could get it um, then there's the dude that just bombs for right. 12 years straight. And like, he, nobody yeah. in the crew want to tell him, like, man, he, he the, well, even though Memphis Bleak was my dude, he the Memphis Bleak of, like, I'm going to put you on some tracks. Yeah. You can do an album. You can do all that. Everything you think. You ain't got no billboards or nothing, but we going we gonna to let you fight. You my G. Up. You my right. dude. I got you. I'll oh, put you on this song, but you just doing the intro. Well, you got to do favors for whack niggas and they're your people. They're your people. Yeah, yeah, I'll feature on your shit. What's the song? (laughs) Is that your trick? You're going to come on right after Missy. You're going to say, yeah. Is that your trick? Yeah, then I'm going to come on. I don't love my fucking place with another one. Kill it. That was my song for a minute. That's Miss Bleak's song. I know. I, was, I think that's the Everybody only thought song it was I listened Missy's to. song. Everybody thought it was Jay Z's song. That was yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was. Missy. It was like we need. He was like, yo, I'll get, I'll get uh, Missy Elliott to feature. They was like, yeah, maybe, maybe one more person. Jay Z. <laughs> huh? Maybe one more right. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're going to need that Jesus co-sign on this song. Yo, don't talk about Memphis Bleak. Uh, you talked about it. I know. Everybody said I looked like him back in the day. I was, that's my I'll dog. Don't act like you were using it. Yeah. You were using it once or twice. Twice to get in the club in New York, you know. Got it. Like Memphis Bleak. <laughs> like, who? Is that Joe? <laughs> yeah. That's me. Yeah. I had to keep doing that, Craig. I hate you. Um, man. Okay. So what, one of the funniest things, like doing interviews or hearing people speak about you, anytime they mention who's the funniest, um, or they talk about anybody funny in the family, a lot of people directed towards you. You've always been like, like this silent weapon that (laughs) just comes out and kills. So you get into anyway, uh, and I and I've witnessed that obviously myself. Um, but you are like this silent weapon that comes out and kills it. You've been on on sets. You worked your way into writing and up to producing, and you did show running and stuff like that. Um, what when, when when did you start getting into the writing? Uh, back on so besides going to the comedy clubs early when uh wayne's brothers was starting up mm. uh i was living with sean and marlon they both lived in the same apartment building mm-hmm. and i was going from one apartment to the next <laughs> but they were working on wayne's brothers and then it got on and they were like yo punch this up if you see any spots for jokes we'll give you 25 dollars if it makes the air yeah so if you ever watch wayne's brothers <laughs> Marlon can't even enter a room without saying saying the joke. He'll be like, hi, old big ass. I was like, Bam. So it got to the point where I was making a couple of hundred dollars a week. Yeah. And uh, they were like, yo, you should just get in the Writers Guild. It'll be better for your career. And uh, it may you may get paid less. But yeah. It'll be better for your career. And I was like, cool. Because at that time, I was doing... PA work. Oh yeah, and was trying to get my DGA. Uh, yeah, and I worked like for three years, and I was like, yeah, I did the three hundred whatever days, and they were like, all right, where's the call sheets? And I was like, huh? 
<laughs> I was supposed to keep those. Yeah. So, yo, so you wanted to get into DG, D, DGA, DGA back when you first started. Well, that's also because that's PA. Keno's like, yeah, it's, you're a PA. Look to see, because you hand out time cards. Yeah. So he's like, see what job you want to do. And I seen how much they got paid. Yeah. And I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can work my way up to director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, man. <laughs> So your first your first real kind of gig was uh, um, in the industry was on Wayans Brothers. Yeah, and then you leveled up. What it's interesting because I was working Wayans Brothers and the Keenan Show at the same time. I remember the Keenan Show. I would go over there for lunch and then I disappear for rehearsal and I just go back and go forth. back. Yeah, I remember. I I went up to one of when he when he uh, interviewed Genuine. I was there when he my pony. I was all shy. I wasn't out the closet yet. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't like penis. Not no more. I'm genuine. I'm too young for this. I want a girl now. Yo. Uh, <laughs> So, so the crazy thing for me is that, you know, trying to get into, like, I've, I've expressed interest in learning how to write and stuff like that and get into that field. Um, but it's such a process. It's such a process to go through. And there's so many different jobs that when you know those jobs, you go, oh, a lot of people could just do that. Could you, could you talk about the different jobs, like, when it comes to writing and the credits and stuff like that in that office? <laughs> Uh, you mean like from staff writers on up? Yeah, cause there's, there's a team uh, of writers that uh pretty much start everything from scratch, mm. uh, from characters on down to locations, and they build it. Uh, then it gets to the actor, and uh, depending on the um, status, if they're a executive producer, uh actor or their actor for hire if they're ep then usually they have notes of their own mm -hmm. uh, then you get notes from the studio mm -hmm. and the network which they went they all went changes so you go back in and change the script f to address everybody's uh issues yeah then you run it again and then when it goes to air depending on who the artist is they may throw some of their own changes in. And some artists like a change on every tape. Yeah. And that's usually when I'm there. And that's because uh, cause you have that within the, the before you shoot. And then you got people on set, like punch-up writers. And also you have some punch-up writers, but uh, usually it's the writing crew. Uh, sometimes they have a couple comedians that are like, funny on their feet yeah and uh yeah then uh but a lot of times it's it's always a collective even if one of the other actors sees something in the scene or yeah you, uh, and then you hear from the audience the laughs you may change it up so. yeah and that that's when you get to do different takes so you can kind of like fill that out has it been is it is it hard like being a creative yourself <clears throat> um, having to work with a team of people. Not, I mean, I know you could be a team player, but you're spending hours. It's, it's hard being a creative in general because uh, a lot of people say it's hard being an actor because you go through so much uh, people not uh, hiring you. and But that's after a writer's written 15 projects that all got turned down yeah. or rejected. Now... You, they have to keep coming in, but the actors may have like five or six scripts to go over in a day, whereas creative, that's each project is a year, two years, three yeah. years. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Damn. It's so many just different things. Like I love, because you have, then you got like, who's the boss? Like you were saying, some people can make changes and do stuff like that, but you have like what your showrunner. You, uh, you have your your showrunner, then you have your other executive producers, uh, then you have your co EPs, then you have your 
supervising producer. Yeah, uh, yes. Supervising <laughs> editor. It's like a then, lot of people to shift through to, to yeah. get. Some people have, uh, like, we, we just did the Daily Show, and they have, like, a team of 30 writers. Damn. Yeah. For what? To make sure. Well, on the Daily Show, you go and start the day with nothing but clippings. Then you pick what clippings. Then you write to those. Then you have to see which ones don't work and before you shoot the show and edit the show to be on that night. So you need a team. So some of these shows we like that shit ain't funny. Right. <laughs> That's thirty people's best shit going up. And you I mean you're writing for that every day. Yeah. Yeah. So you got damn. That's how it is on tape night too. You gotta know everybody's gonna possibly want another joke. And it's also after every take the audience seen it. Yeah. So you wanna keep the audience with the show. Well, it, it gets crazy because I've been on sets where I've been on sets where you got writers that write some stuff and I've had the actors come in and go, um, could we change it? And it's sometimes not as funny or or better, a uh, crazier one is when somebody doesn't want you to write anything funnier for the other person. Uh, well, a lot of that also goes into sometimes people want to put a joke somewhere where it's a story point gotcha. or where these words have to be said there because it's going to pay off later. Gotcha. So that's why some stars that are EPs and part of the writing process, they understand some of those and they know where their pockets are. Gotcha. So it's easier for them to freestyle than someone else when it's like you're supposed to say the map is under the bed. Right, right. And you turn <laughs> every damn thing else. Now we don't know <laughs> right. how the fuck they found the map. Right. There, there was something that I learned. Uh, I, I did this indie film and I was one of those people that was trying to make every sentence funny. And I didn't realize that you, the, the lines are also timed. Mm -hmm. So you, if you got what I mean, you can explain it better. But if you got a half hour show, yeah, each page is supposed to be like a minute or forty five seconds, right? So it's timing. So the longer you go means the more of the show and story points and stuff have to be cut down, right? W which makes it really hard in editing. Uh, and then you got commercials and stuff, or not? Commercials, is it still the same commercials now? stick to the script exactly because the brand has their people on set, they keep it uh, strictly how it is on the on the strip, the comic strip that they draw up, the, of all the shots and the words, because they want their product represented exactly how they want their product represented. That's so cool. But isn't it... Also, on, on movies that I'm talking about on TV shows that I'm talking about are Wayne's TV shows. We do things gotcha, different. Gotcha. Other people are like, no, stick to the script. That's why we hire the writers. So a lot of times on set, you do it their way, and then you say, can I, can I play a little bit? And if they're like, yeah, we have time. If not, they're like, no, nah, we got 18 more shots to get up today. We ain't got time to play around. Right, right, right. That's, but I, I didn't know that a sponsor... I mean, I guess I get it if they're funding your project, but not because it's it's publicity for them. They don't it's, care if it's funny or not. They just want their product sold with your your likeness attached, not necessarily your jokes. Right. Do people really look at scenes and be like, yo, that was funny. Is that a Coke? Is that a... <laughs> You'd be surprised how I many people be watching shows and that person gets up to get popcorn. You're like, damn, I want some popcorn Yeah, let me too. get some... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. They need Subway. I haven't had Subway in a minute. That is crazy. Okay, I I totally understand. Is there a difference working with movies versus TV shows? Um, uh, the biggest difference. See, I've worked single cam where it's a lot more like film, where you have your days planned out, how many shots you have to get up. And then you time that out to, all right, well, maybe we can get this many takes for each setup. And the more takes that it takes the actor to get down or the director like means you're taking out of that much part of your day. And mm -hmm. you're usually on such a schedule that if you're missing that, you might have to rent a location for another day, which Damn. eats up your budget. So while the person's trying to be funny or whatever, it's like, 
if you've perfected it and you got it down, we yeah. knocked out these two quick takes, go ahead and play with one. So, so, so funny because you, you started in writing, but then you've actually went into acting. I actually started in acting. Did you? Oh man. What did you do? <laughs> Why am I learning so much about you today? I went on so many auditions that I botched because <laughs> I, I went in as a writer. Mm -hmm. So I'd go in. And I'd hand the casting director, hey, Robbie Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hand her scripts with my shit, scratching their stuff out with new lines for her to say to me with jokes. I was just used to punching shit <laughs> up. <laughs> that I punched the whole script up and be like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be laughing at shit, but I never got the job. I did see a couple of my jokes in the movies that oh, I went up that's for. that's so funny. But I was like, oh, okay. That's so funny. And, <laughs> but so, so you tried to do it, but you wasn't getting booked. But then when you finally did uh, start acting, I mean, you was writing on that too. Yeah, that Dang. was hard because it's easy to play somebody else, but when you have to play yourself, right? It's like you, what? <laughs> you're like, how am I? Then you act like you, and they be like, no, no, more energy. Right? <laughs> no, no, do it more like this. You're like, that ain't me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to be you, but heighten you. Be you, but not you. Yeah, yeah, but you be you. Exactly. Can I smoke this blunt? You right. don't smoke weed. <laughs> it's like, but what am I supposed to That's funny. Have you, have you ever, because you've watched auditions. Uh, I've seen a few auditions of some of the movies and stuff like that. And you being in an audition room, does it bother you if somebody comes and tries to change your lines? Uh, No. As long as it's funny, it better be and it funny makes and sense. Enjoy. If it's in pocket, I'm like, cool. Uh, they know, they know what I like. I just want to paint the picture, and then you come and add the color. Yeah. Uh, if that's that's what people dream of, like, oh, you get it. Yeah. So everything you're doing in the scene, you get it. So yeah. we don't have to be on you to be like, even if it's the way you pick up a cup, yeah. or the way you chose to wear your shirt. You get the character full on. That's so weird because as as someone who goes and does auditions, you hear like don't you hear sometimes don't go in an ad lib. You know, you do the words exactly on the paper, and maybe you'll have time to do one later. But I've heard you don't go in there because maybe the writers in there or something, and they'll feel like, oh, you don't think I'm funny. Well, it's if you get the character, if you just go in there last minute and. Change, change up, stuff. up shit is like no, but if you get the character, all you got to do is either hold the pause the right way, yeah, or just hit your joke at the end of their joke where it's like, oh, okay, you you double up, yeah. I get they get the character, yeah. They they they're not just trying to make me laugh. They get the character and it fit, so I trust them more now going further. <clears throat> Talk to you after my uh, before my auditions. Some people don't like it. I'm like, shit. Marlon went and did Richard Pryor audition. He ad libbed. And I'm like, <laughs> did you punch up a Richard Pryor right? joke? What? You, I knew the joke word for word. He <laughs> added some. I'm like, wait, did you just punch you up Richard Pryor? Right? You don't punch up Richard Pryor. I, I wouldn't did not give you the job. <laughs> what is wrong with him? Why do we have this type of family? I don't even... Ah, I love it. I, I loved you doing this, Craig. This was everything. I've learned so much uh, from you that I, I thought I knew more about. But this was amazing. Please you know, tell them where they can find you, what you got going on. Uh, at Craig Wayans on all social media. Uh, Morning, Mr. Mr. Toxic. <laughs> Mr. Toxic. Uh, for merch. Uh, I got the new issues, shirts and hats going, and uh, yeah, building my YouTube, and you'll see me on the road at some shows with Marlon. Hey, yeah. I'm bringing him to some of my shows. What did you say it was Mr. Uh, Mr. Toxic Doc Shop. Mr. Toxic Doc Shop. Go get you some stuff. Go check out my cousin. Go follow him at C Wayans, and make sure you subscribe and to this channel, and uh, like, and you know, comment. Ask questions, you know what I mean? We'll see what's up. We'll get them answered. Appreciate y'all.
Hit that little subscribe bell. <laughs> <laughs> Ping! <laughs> I do my own sound effects. <laughs> <laughs>